Hello everybody, welcome back to another video here on my channel about the Celestron Origin. Tonight we've got just past a first quarter moon on our hands and that is going to present us with an opportunity to try out the Celestron Origin on the moon. Now of course we know that the Celestron Origin is capable of capturing photos of the moon of course with its large aperture and decent resolution camera on the front but I have never done this before. I know many new Origin users may not have ever explored photographing the moon yet with theirs. So why don't we go through this together and learn how to take a photo of the moon. Just some things really quickly that I read in the manual though for doing lunar photography is if your exposure is under one second long, which obviously the moon at F2, we're going to really have to bring down that brightness. Our exposure is definitely going to be under the one second threshold. We need to use snapshot mode is what the manual from Celestron suggests. Basically, this is where we are going to take the iPad, we're going to convert it into snapshot mode. I do believe we have to initialize the telescope first once it gets a little bit darker so that the tracking accuracy is relevant to us because if I just power it on right now and send it over to the moon, it's not going to track it for us, which is going to present even bigger headaches trying to keep the moon centered and do all of the camera controls all at the same time on the iPad will probably be a little bit cumbersome. So we have to wait till it gets dark to do the initialization. But I'm really curious how good the Origins lunar shots look. Tonight, on the Terminator, that is the line between the dark and the bright part of the moon, we have sunrise on the crater Copernicus, which is one of my favorites to look at. So I'm going to grab my iPad, we got to wait for it to get dark, and I'll see you in just a moment. All right, it's finally dark enough. I've got the origin finished with its initialization procedure for the night and we are ready to start off with going to the moon and we need to activate the snapshot mode and I'll show you how to do that here. I'm going to do a screen recording of the iPad so you can see it right here so we can follow along together. Now one of the things to note about this is that the Origin does not have a moon-specific mode like something like the Sea Star and some of the other smart telescopes do where it can successfully go to the moon and recalibrate the camera real fast and say, okay, I know exactly I'm on the center of the moon. The Origin has an issue with being able to dim that camera down without the use of snapshot mode, which we'll get into here in just a second. So we can do successful go-to. The Origin will put the moon somewhere in the camera field of view, or at least it should, and then we should be able to activate snapshot mode and get all of the other settings and parameters in place for us to take a decent moonshot. So we're going to go on the star map here right now. We're on NF, which is a star up in Pegasus, and we're going to select the moon, and we're going to hit the icon to slew. Origin's going to move its way down to the moon, or where we think the moon is. We can see on our little live view here in the corner, as we approach the moon, it should get really bright like it is. Now the Origin is giving us the error that the Origin cannot find enough stars. That's simply because, like I said, it doesn't have a lunar dedicated mode to be able to decipher the moon versus the plate solving technology that it's trying to do every time it locates a target. So we'll just hit OK. And the moon is in there. If we pull up the live view, you can see the moon is there with the ridiculously overexposed moon. And what we're going to have to do is hit the little up arrow and we're going to have to click on snapshot and enable snapshot mode. And there we go, now the moon looks uh, pretty normal. Let's go back here and adjust some of these parameters here. So the exposure looks like one millisecond is what uh, is applicable for the moon. If we increase this, you can see the moon gradually increases in brightness. This would be useful if you wanted to use the origin for something like a lunar eclipse. Uh, you'd be able to use the origin in that way and kind of expose it a little longer to reveal maybe more of the red colors during a total lunar eclipse. But for now, uh, one millisecond is what we're going to go with. The ISO, I assume, is the lowest, which it is at 100, which is good. And the focus should be uh, the same focus that it 
focused for your stars earlier in the initialization process. So no issues there. And on the left and right here, we see the icons for the telescope control so you can center up the moon in the field of view here. Uh, it does seem to be tracking the moon, which is good news that once you're done with the initialization, it will at least track the moon for you. So that's at least a thumbs up for me. Um, I would like to see a dedicated lunar mode, though, so when it goes over to the moon, it darkens that camera ISO and is able to kind of sort of plate solve sort of that the moon is in the center. But I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff in the works for software. So let's center up the moon here. Unfortunately, I think that this is at full speed no matter what. So we're going to have to make very small adjustments to the way we uh, center up the moon here. And uh, what we can do is we're going to hit capture image and that's going to take a single shot of the moon for us. And we can see there, there's the, the live view. That's good. I'm going to save it. But pretty much that is how we capture photos of the moon with the origin for right now. There is no ability to do video mode to, so we could take it later and stack it uh, because the origin allows you to save raw files and everything, but we can't do that yet in terms of the lunar stuff. So uh, maybe that is something that we can all suggest to Celestron and see if they can put into this software. But uh, as for right now, here is the result of our imaging with the origin on the lunar surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time as I have a lot more origin stuff coming up. Clear skies as always.